So I'm just going to take you through some notes on upgrading to solid state drive and selecting the correct SATA operation. The first thing I'm going to note is that Dell usually have pretty detailed owner's manuals or service manuals, and these may be found on downloads.dell.com. Now I'm just going to use the XPS 8700 as an example. So I'm just going to select the system type as desktop and then I'm going to select XPS and then I'm going to select 8700. Now to get to the English owner's manual as quickly as possible, I'm just going to search for ENUS and this will highlight all the English manuals and I'll just select next till I find the owner's manual and I'm just going to save that in downloads. So once this is saved in downloads, I can just open it and I can just look for any details about the system drives. So I can just scroll down and look at the contents. And now we've got details about the MSATA drive and the hard drive. So you can see this is in page 33. So let's go here and see that looks pretty easy to remove. And the hard drive looks pretty easy to remove as well. This is usually the case in desktops as the internals are usually pretty easy to access and to replace should you want to. In laptops it can be a bit more involved but the um, hard drive or the solid state drive are usually the most accessible items besides the battery. In tablets it can be slightly more involved again. Normally I prefer Crucial as the manufacturer for the solid state drive. However, Samsung and Intel also have a very good reputation. When selecting a solid state drive, you'll need to select the correct type. Here's an example of three different types. The M2 SSD, which is the newest type. The older M SATA type, which is now being phased out by M2 in the market. They're not cross compatible, however. And um, two and a half inch solid state drive. And there's various adapters for the two and a half inch solid state drive, seven millimeter to nine. So perhaps the main reason that I buy more towards Crucial is that they have a really nice website and on this website they have a system scanner. So I'm just going to go to crucial.com and I'm going to go to the UK one. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select scan your system. Of course you can select the model number to the left if you know what it is. But I recommend scanning your system. So accept the license agreement and then select download the scanner. So I've downloaded the scanner and now I'm just going to select run. I'll accept the user account control prompt and I'll just select to open this in Edge. And now Crucial will scan my system. So this is a latitude 13, 7, 3, 50 and it's going to tell me compatible upgrades. So my RAM is telling me I've got the maximum amount available, so there's no upgrades listed. And it's listing an M2 solid state drive, for instance, this 500 gigabyte one as an upgrade. So I can scroll down and look at all the specs if I want. However, I'm just going to look at another model now, the XPS 8700. And here you can see the other types of 
solid state drive. It's got both M Sana solid state drives and also two and a half inch solid state drives. So let's just look at one of the M Sana solid state drives and scroll down and look at its specifications. And let's also look at the two and a half inch solid state drive and look at its specifications. So now let's just look at a laptop which came with a 9.5mm 2.5 inch hard drive and we'll see that Crucial are only selling 7mm solid state drives however they do include a spacer so this means you just slot in the SSD and the spacer in place of the old 9.5mm hard drive and as I said before I recommend using the crucial system scanner because the parts that it will list will have the correct adapters if you need them now I'm going to discuss SATA operation so the main SATA operation is advanced host controller interface AHCI in this configuration, Windows is installed on a solid state drive directly, i.e. you have a Windows boot solid state drive. Now this can be the 2.5 inch, it can be the M2 or it can be the M SATA. You may also have adapters for these drives as mentioned earlier on. In systems with um, Windows solid state boot drive and additional data hard drives or solid state drives the SATA operation will also be AHCI so the next SATA operation that I'm going to mention was one that utilized a small capacity solid state drive that was 32 to 64 gigabytes and a large hard drive now the concept of this SATA operation was that the solid state drive is fast but of low capacity and the hard drive is slow but of large capacity. So essentially Windows background processes were cached to and from the solid state drive to improve the boot time and the system performance. Now this was done in the past because solid state drives were incredibly expensive or they were of low capacity as shown. Because solid state drives are now affordable for 250 gigabytes or superior, this SATA operation should be considered completely obsolete. And I would recommend avoid using it because it can lead to additional boot problems. If you have a cached solid state drive, just remove it and replace it with a high capacity solid state drive. So the next SATA operations that I'm going to mention are the RAID SATA configurations and these require multiple drives. The first one is the mirrored configuration. That's where you have two hard drives or two solid state drives that are identical in capacity and they have identical contents. This means any operation carried out in drive A is automatically carried out in drive B. This means that if either drive A or drive B fail, then the other drive with all the information is remaining. So it's essentially set up to prevent data loss from hardware failure. 
The next configuration I'm going to mention is the striped configuration. This is when the data is striped across drive A and drive B. Now if we take the Windows 10 logo as an example, you'll see that half the logo is on drive A in stripes and the other half of the logo is on drive B in stripes. Now both drives working together give a complete Windows 10 logo. And this can be seen on the effective virtual drive one. So the main advantage of this configuration is that you're accessing data from both drives simultaneously, i.e. you've got the speed of both SATA ports. So this speeds up your system by about two times. And you've got the summed capacity of both SATA drives. The main limitation of this configuration is that if drive A fails, then drive B has incomplete information. And if drive B fails, then drive A has incomplete information. So if either drive fail, then you've essentially lost all your data. An advanced system such as a server might have four or more serial ports. So you could have four or more drives in a more complicated striped and mirrored configuration, i.e. strike two drives and then mirror them. So let's now go to the UEFI BIOS setup. So what you want to do is power down your Dell computer and then power it up and then press F2. And this will take you to the Dell UEFI BIOS setup. Press the right arrow key until you get to advanced and then press down until you get to SATA operation and then press enter. You'll be able to select any of the other SATA operations if they're available. This system only has one drive, so it only gives the AHCI as an option. So I'm just going to highlight that and then press enter. And then I'm going to press F10 to save and exit. 